In this video, I want to address a topic where I literally get at least one question every single week where people are asking me about so how do I connect my reverse proxy in Docker to my other containers or how do I manage Docker networks in general. So I thought let's make a video where I explain it to you and show you all the different Docker network types like bridges, Mac VLANs, hosts and so on. And I also show you some examples of when and how to use them. But first of all, if you want to authenticate to your server securely or access your environments with additional two-factor authentication, then take a look at the sponsor of this video, you probably know it, it's Teleport. Because with Teleport you can protect and securely authenticate to your server's infrastructure, lock any user's actions and record sessions. You can install the free community edition completely self-hosted at no cost, so just download and try it out. And suppose you want to use Teleport within your business environment, in that case they also offer an enterprise version with additional 24-7 support, an active directory integration and much more, so just reach out to the Teleport team. So if you know how to work with Docker, you probably should know that you don't necessarily need to configure a network, because Docker always creates a default network where all the containers you deploy are automatically attached to. And for most basic setups, this is enough. If you just need a single tier application like a web server, a dashboard or maybe even a management tool, that's totally fine. So I guess for very basic setups we probably even don't need this video, but hear me out. Especially when you are planning a more complex setup or multi-tier applications, it makes a lot of sense to configure networking in your Docker stack and specify how these containers are connected to each other and to the outside network. Because maybe you need some containers that would need access to a database or you want to isolate them from all the other containers on the host. In these situations, you need to configure your networks appropriately. So let's take a look at the different types of networks. Okay, so I opened two different shells here to my home server where I'm running a Docker host and some Docker containers. And this is actually my production home server setup, so I hope I won't break anything here. But it's just the best way to demonstrate to you how the different types of Docker networks are working. And first of all, we will start with the first Docker network type, which is a bridge network. A bridge is a virtual interface that connects all the internal Docker containers to the Docker hosts network. So for example, when we run a simple container like an Nginx container, this would be automatically attached to the default Docker network, which is also a bridge network. And if we want to access any specific service in that container from outside, you would need to expose this with specific port numbers. For example, for HTTP connections on a simple web server, we can expose the port 80. So when we run this container and try to access it from outside, we can just simply open a new HTTP connection to the Docker's host IP address, which is in my case, the 192.168.0.5 and we can now access the Nginx web server container, which is great. So this is nothing new to you, hopefully, but I also want to show you how this is working under the hood. When we inspect the Nginx container, for example, you can see that this container is attached to a network which is called Bridge and it also got a completely different IP address here. It got an IP address from the range 172.17.0.0.16 and the IP address is the 10 at the end. So how does it work? The Docker host will automatically create new interfaces for every bridge or network that you are creating and it will automatically attach those containers to that bridge within its own subnet. You could also see that specific interface when you type in IPA and search for the Docker Zero network. So this should be a Docker network that is automatically enabled on the Docker host once you install Docker. And you can see this is our IP network. This is our subnet. So every container that we are running and not specifically attaching to any different network will be automatically attached to the default bridge network, which is using the Docker Zero interface on the host. And all the containers that you're running there get an IP address from the Docker's DHCP server in that specific subnet. Then you can connect all the containers to each other by just referring to the IP address. So you can reach container 2 from container 1 by just referring to its IP address within that network. And you can also reach any containers from the host. But one thing you can't do with this default network is to isolate Docker containers from each other and do name resolution. So when you're running some containers here in that default network, you can only refer by IP address. And then you can get into problems. For example, when you want to access a database that's running on container A, and you want to connect to that database from container B, you can refer to container A's IP address, but that might be changed once you redeploy that container or you deploy other containers. So therefore, it's useful to create custom bridge networks to isolate those containers and to offer DNS name resolution within those networks. So let's take a closer look at this. For example, when we enter Docker network LS, you can see 
all the different networks that are currently running on this host. And you can see there's our default bridge network, which is the bridge driver. We also have the host network where we will come to later. And we also have the non-network. So when you want to completely isolate a container from all the networking access, just connect it to the non-network and it won't be able to reach anything. And I also have a custom bridge network, which is called NPM default. So this is uh, one network I'm using in my Docker stack where I'm just connecting one application with one database. And I don't want these applications to connect to any other containers within that Docker host. So I'm creating a custom network where I also can refer to the name of the container by using DNS name resolution. Let me show you how that works. You can also create custom networks by entering Docker network create and then simply the name of the network, just like custom bridge, for example. And when we now check it, you can see that there is another bridge network created with this specific name and it also got a different network ID. So this will also create a second or a virtual bridge interface on the Docker's host. So when we search for that ID here, for example, let's type in IPA and grab for this ID. You can see there is another interface that was created with the name BR dash and then the ID of the network and it got a complete different subnet. And when we now start a container and attach it to this custom bridge, it should get an IP address from this subnet. To do troubleshooting on Docker networks, I just found a very, very nice image, which is called Netshoot. And this Docker image is a very lightweight Docker image that comes with a bunch of different network troubleshooting tools. And you can easily use that on Docker or Kubernetes to do networking troubleshooting between containers. You can see this is an image that comes with some included packages like a bash terminal, a curl, an iperf, an IP tables, IP set, also an nmap or TCP dump. So you can do a lot of things with a basic troubleshooting tools on Linux. By the way, I might do a separate video on some of these tools as well. So to run this container, you can just go to my cheat sheets uh, repository on GitHub. You can find that in the description down below. And for the Docker CLI tool, I also created a cheat sheet with a bunch of different commands you will use many, many times when you're working with Docker. And for example, the network troubleshooting tool is also including the net shoot Docker image. So let's run a new container and attach this to the network by using the double dash network. So you can do that on all containers that you're running and attach it to the custom bridge network. So this will now open a shell inside the Netshoot container. So we are not on my home server anymore. We are now inside the Docker container. And if we now execute an IPA command, you can see that it got an IP address from this new IP address range from our custom bridge network. And we can now just access the internet here, just like on our default network. And we can also ping the host network, for example, when we ping the IP address of our Docker host. But what we can do is we can't ping any IP addresses inside other Docker networks. For example, let's try to ping the Nginx server. It got the 10 at the end. So you can see this is not working because Docker has isolated this custom bridge from all other networks. And what we also can do is we can use name resolution within that custom network. So for example, if we just run a second Netshoot container and give it a different name like Netshoot2 and also attach this to the custom bridge network, you can see if I now ping the IP address of container1, which I can't remember, so this should be the 2 at the end. Oh. You can see that I can reach Netshoot1, but I also can resolve the name of the container, which is Netshoot. So when I ping Netshoot, for example, I can also ping this first container. And on the first container, I can also ping Netshoot2 by using the DNS name and it will resolve to the dot free IP address. Okay, so we covered the default bridge network and also the custom bridges. This network type is probably the most used type. So I would say that this type I probably use in 90% of all the use cases. And it's great because you can isolate containers from the host operating system and you have an automatic DNS resolution between them, at least in the custom networks. But sometimes isolation is not what you want. I'll give you an example. Suppose you want to run containers that should connect to other local services or resources on the host and use the same routing tables. If you deploy a WireGuard VPN container, for example, you might not want to isolate this container with a separate virtual IP address. Instead, you want to run this application directly connected to the host network, just like every other application that's installed without Docker. So in these situations, I typically use a different network type, the host network type. And this network completely removes the isolation layer from the host, so it handles the container as it would just be a regular application on the host. 
To demonstrate the host network, this is very easy. First of all, let's stop our Nginx container that is still running in the background. And let's start creating another Nginx container. So this time we are also starting an Nginx container, but instead of exposing the port, we are now attaching this to the host network. And we now don't need to expose the port anymore because the host network doesn't have an isolation layer between the container and the host. It doesn't have a virtual interface. It will just run this container as it would run without Docker. So let's just hit enter and you can see if I execute a Docker PS and search for Nginx, you can see this container is running here. But you can also access this web server by entering the IP address of our host. And this is possible because when we check the listening ports on our Docker host, you can see that this is currently running and listening on all HTTP connections on all IP addresses. So this is how the host network works. Okay, so now we got bridges and host networks, but I also wanna show you two other network types which are very handy in scenarios where you have applications running on the host, but you need a separate IP address for them from the physical network. And I needed to set up this really just in one case when I was testing Pi-hole on my Docker host. And Pi-hole, if you don't know that yet, it is a network-wide ad blocker. By the way, if you're actually interested in Pi-hole, it's pretty nice to manage DNS records and block ads with in your whole network and it's doing this by running its own DNS and DHCP server for your network. You'll find this application as most of my deployments and tools that I'm running in my home lab as a Docker Compose template on my personal Git repository boilerplates. So just go to my personal GitHub page, you'll find a link in the description down below of course, and go to the boilerplate section and then use that to deploy Pi-hole. Anyway, so back to Docker networks. If you might want to run such an application that requires a service like DNS or DHCP, but on the host you already have a DNS or DHCP server running. And when they then try to start a container, you'll get an error message that this port is already allocated. So how could you run this container? Well, if you now think you can just use a bridge network and expose the service on a different external port, yeah, this might work for some services, but it won't work for DNS or DHCP because these are standardized protocols. And every client really accepts a DNS server to run on port 53, for example. There's no easy way to tell your clients, hey, if you want to make a DNS request, then please use the port 8053 instead of the standard one. For these situations, we have Mac VLANs and IP VLANs in Docker. And they both are very similar and allow you to assign a MAC address to your Docker containers and bridge this to your physical network connected with the host. So to demonstrate how Mac VLANs and IP VLANs work on Docker, I want to show you what happens when you try to create a container and expose a port that is already running or used on the host. So remember, we still have our Nginx container that is running here and that's allocating or bound to the port 80 on the Docker's host network. So when we now try to run an Nginx container and try to expose the port 80, you will get an error message because the port 80 is already in use by the host or by another container or an application. It doesn't really matter. But when we still want to expose the port 80 on this container, we can change it. We now could also create a different Docker network, which is called a Mac VLAN, and bridge this container to the physical network of our Docker host and use the same IP address range, the same subnet like the Docker host is using. We still have our networks here. We now want to create a new network, which is called Mac VLAN. So enter docker network create and now we need to specify a different driver because the mac vlan is a separate driver in docker so with the dash d parameter mac vlan we can specify that and now we also want to specify the subnet and the ip address range of this network interface because remember we want to bind this to the physical network of the docker host which is using the ip address range 192.168.0.024 so we will need to use that same subnet here. So specify the subnet, the 24 subnet mask, and we also want to specify the gateway because otherwise the container doesn't know where to connect to this network. And now if we would create the network with this configuration and attach a container to it, you would probably assume this would get an IP address from the local DHCP server in your physical network. So this is unfortunately not the case because this is really dumb, let's be honest. Because Docker uses its own DHCP server and when you configure it this way, it will try to get the first container, the first available IP address in that range, which will be the one. And then I get an IP address conflict with my gateway. The same happens for the co second container, which will get the IP address two at the end. 
which is probably in use by another network device within your physical network. So to avoid this, there are several ways to do it. So I do it this way. I specify the IP address range of the IP addresses the Docker host should assign to the containers. And I now limit this to just one IP address, not used by any other device within that network. So I will use the IP address 253 at the end, which should be the last IP address that is ever used in a network. And I also exclude this from a local DHCP server to avoid any IP address conflict. So what I do now is when I create those containers within that specific network, I will use a static IP address. So I will show you that later. Let's first of all create this network. We also need to specify the parent interface. So the parent interface is the interface where this uh, Mac VLAN will be bridged to. In my case, it is the ANS18, which should be the physical interface of your Docker host. And we also need to give it a custom name, for example, custom Mac VLAN, for example. Let's hit enter. And when we check it, you can see that there is a new network created with the name custom Mac VLAN and it got the driver Mac VLAN now. You can also search for that interface, but you won't find it because this is working differently under the hood in the Docker networks. So don't worry about it. It will be handled differently. So now let's start running our Netshoot container again. But in this example, I don't want to uh, connect this to the custom bridge, but to the custom Mac VLAN. And if I now would run this container, it would get this one IP address, this 253 at the end. So let's try to do that. And let's also see what happens when we try to run a second container on the network. You can see this is not working because there are no available IPv4 addresses in that network. Remember, I've just specified within that network that it should have exact one IP address and it can just allocate what it has. But we can still run a container by using a static IP address. So let's create a new container here on that same network. But it's using a static IP address from my physical network, which is using 200. So I, I know that this IP is not used by any other device. And the second container will also use the IP address 201 at the end. So let's hit enter here. And now I'm running two containers in the Mac VLAN. So I can now just try to ping the gateway, which should now work. And I could also reach the internet from these containers. And of course, I can also ping the second container from the first one. So it should be bridged to the physical network. So now if we try to ping this container from outside, you could also see this is working. So this is a completely different machine in a different network. And I'm trying to ping the 200, you can also see this is working. And you also don't need to expose any ports here. For example, in, if we want to run an Nginx web server, so let's do that again. And I want to connect this to the network custom Mac VLAN with the IP address 202 at the end. I don't need to expose the port here. Let's run this and let's try to access the web server here. It now gets a different IP address. It gets the 202 at the end you can see I can now access the container. So you might now ask, so where is the difference between Mac VLANs and IP VLANs? Well, there's not much difference, but there's one significant difference, which is that Mac VLANs allocate a different Mac address for every container that's attached to the network. And IP VLANs only use one MAC address for all the containers. And this is sometimes needed. For example, if you're running Docker hosts in a network where a switch doesn't like that one specific port is running different MAC addresses and the switch probably makes problems, you could then switch to an IP VLAN because then there's only one MAC address on the port of your Docker host and it basically routes the connections based on the IP address. There's also another difference between IP VLANs and MAC VLANs. And this is IP VLANs can operate in layer 3 and layer 2 mode. So you can change that. And it's depending on your use case and setup. I've personally not seen any use case where I need this. So in a home network, MAC VLANs always solve the problems for me. So I never used IP VLANs. But just in case you have some problems with your network switch because it's rejecting your packets because of the multiple usage of MAC addresses on one single port, you might switch to IP VLAN and see if that works for you. Okay, so I believe we covered all the important network types. There's just one more, the overlay network. So this is a network type that I've personally never used because it's only important when you are running multiple Docker hosts in a swarm cluster and you want to connect those containers through one network that's spread across those different hosts. But let's be honest, guys. Who uses Docker Swarm <laughs> if you need a cluster to run containers? I would just go with Kubernetes, which is probably much more convenient these days. But anyway, if you still need overlay networks, you will find a documentation on the Docker's homepage. I'll put you a link to that in the description, of course. So I'm done for today. Thanks everybody for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.